Um, yeah, I mean, I'm a very, I'm a very private person. Obviously, this is the first time going live on my account. So, um, so one of the questions is, are you okay? I am great. <laughs> I'm actually way more than okay. Thank you for asking. Hello. Are you in a cult? No. I'm not in a cult. Love you. More excited to see you in person. Okay. Uh, more details to come. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have a family meeting. from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It is Wednesday, March 9th. Last week, I introduced you to a story about 7M dancers, and I introduced you into who Miranda Wilking is or Miranda Derrick. Since then, there has been a lot of developments, and I've been doing a lot of research on the topic, and I've been diving more deeply into the situation. There has been so much that's happened in the past week, and I don't even know where to start, but I will start today by stating that Miranda is meeting with her parents as we speak. So earlier today, she went live on her Instagram to show that she was having a family meeting with her parents and she definitely did not look happy. Love you, more excited to see you in person. Okay, uh, more details to come. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have a family meeting. Bye guys. Her meeting with her parents followed a series of live videos that she did on her TikTok in what I would call odd to say the least. In one of the videos, she appeared to be laughing and overcompensating to show that she was happy. Never felt safer. Um, but yeah, I mean, there have just been a lot of lies uh, being told just a lot of twisting of the truth. Um, yeah, I mean, I just want to say that I have, um, I have spoken to my family this past year. I actually just talked to my sister a week ago. So there's that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I should look presentable. Another live stream that she did, all she did was painted her nails and folded laundry for an hour and said nothing. Hello. Are you in a cult? No. I'm not in a cult. I'm in a house. I'm in a marriage. But I'm not in a cult. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm really good. I'm actually great. In a separate live after that, she went and read passages from Proverbs in the Bible. Your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. Wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. Wisdom will save you from evil people, from those whose words are twisted. These men turn from the right way to walk down dark paths. They take pleasure in doing wrong and they enjoy the twisted ways of evil. All of these messages and all of these videos made it look like Miranda was not in control and was doing this sort of at the direction of 7M. To top that off, there was a ton of different fake accounts that were popping up all over the place to try to smear her parents and say that the reason why she left was because her parents were just bad people. Now, well, I will say this. Well, the Wilkins might have brought this attention to the situation by letting us know who the group was and, the, and what they were facing, 
The issues are not only related to Miranda. In fact, since this has gone sort of, I don't know, slowly going viral, more and more people that are associated with the dancers have come out and said that their relationships with the dancers have changed dramatically. We, I, have heard from multiple people. I have heard from friends from Aubrey Fisher, who has one of the largest platforms of all of the dancers. I have heard from Kendra Willis's best friend who is very worried about her. I have heard from B Dash's ex-wife who is worried about him and he's not talking to his son. I have heard from people connected to Tight Eyes. I've heard from people connected to Kylie. The overwhelming theme from all of these people is that since getting involved with Robert Shin and his group, they have changed. They don't speak the same way that they used to do. and. They used to, and they're highly controlled by a man named Daniel Joseph. Well, last week I told you about how there was this lawsuit between Robert Shin and Lydia Chung back in 2009, and I sort of shared with you that back then Lydia had accused him of, you know, convincing the congregation to donate all of their money, forcing them to work 14 to 16 hours a day. She stated that, you know, he insert like installed things on her computer on their computers to spy on them, that they were told to donate all of their money and give it all to God. They to she said that she she called him a man of God. You know, there was a lot of different aspects of this. In one, in, um, when Robert's sister ultimately files for bankruptcy, Lydia sued them, and she alleged that Robert and Catherine had placed the members of the church into separate homes divided by gender and then cut them off from their friends and families and then told them the people that they lived with would now become their family members. Her lawsuit alleges a cult-like cult, a cult-like church that runs upon hard like discipline and fear of God to make them not only pay the church but also to pay Robert. In a deposition in 2011, Robert admitted that he tells church members that they should not only bless the church but also bless the pastor. And he admitted in the deposition that if you don't bless the pastor, you will be cursed. So we get this idea that he's telling people at his church that, hey, if you don't come and if you don't not only give money to me, you also uh, don't get blessed by God and I will curse you. Using the wrath of God as motivation and people buying into it, he admitted in the same deposition to likely have received over $4.7 million in donations, which he then also admitted he used not for the benefit of the church, church, but for the benefit of his companies, which were LLCs and mortgage companies and finance companies, and that he took loans out against the church that he never paid back. Ultimately, Lydia lost the case, not because they didn't admit what they were doing, but instead because it was freedom of religion. And she basically was just following his lead. And so because she was practicing her faith, it's her fault that she did what he said she should do. Today, here we are, and Miranda is finally meeting with her family. And this is kind of a part where more and more negative press has been coming out. There has been brands that have been dropping them. I was I spoke to someone in talent management who has contacts with the Clippers who flat out told me that the LA Clippers are investigating 7M and are re and have postponed any future uh, dances that they do with 7M. Other brands uh, like Spanx and companies that are like Toyota took down their commercials at one point in time that they had posted on social media. There has been such considerable considerable backlash on social media about this group that now the group 7M is being forced to respond. And one of those responses is that they're going to let Miranda see her parents. Now, mind you, some of the dancers have had op have had relationships still with their parents or they do speak to their families, but it doesn't mean that things haven't changed. It also doesn't mean that the strategies that are being implemented by 7M aren't overwhelmingly controlling and extremely curious. In fact, through records I was able to obtain on properties, I was able to locate that the dancers are being housed in homes owned by the church, they're paying rent to the church, and they're living in groups 
of members. So there's five members in one house, there's four members in another, there's three in another, something to that effect. And they all live together, commune together, and the church has full control over them. As they started get, getting more and more backlash, Isaiah Shin, who is Robert's son, made an extremely curious post on his Instagram where he said this, you know nothing about us because she is the most free. Married, has her own house and her own car. Oh wait, didn't the military tell you that? implying that she was the most free because she had a car. Miranda actually doesn't have a car listed in her name that I could find, and based on documents that Lydia Chung filed in court, she stated that the church made them drive church cars so that it would be harder for them to leave the group. The church split, Robert's church split in 2008 when a rift between he and his sister came, at, came to be, and he has been motivated since then to create a sanctuary where he can control every facet of somebody's life and also make all the money. In fact, I spoke to several people with connections to the Shins who said that this plan that Robert has been implementing today has been in the works for years with the goal of him having all the money. When you have someone who is controlling every facet of someone's life, you are controlling their work, who their friends are, who their family is, who they can talk to, who they can see, the money that they spend, the what they wear on their videos, the music that they dance to. This is not normal for managers. Managers in the entertainment industry are tasked with helping build businesses, not stifle them under fierce dictatorship control. They will help them make good decisions about investing, about spending their money wisely, but they don't say you can't spend money. They also don't wanna live with their clients. They need a break from their clients and they want their clients to have free will to do what they need to do because it's not the manager's job to run their life. I was told by multiple people that the Shins have no experience in managing people and so what we're seeing right now is sort of a really overwhelming like colossal mess where they thought that they could weasel their way into the mainstream media and try to dictate what people did and said and have nobody be the wiser. But I've spoken to so many people in the industry that have told me that they have known behind the scenes that this has been happening for over a year. So I know there's lots of hot takes right now on is it a cult? Is it not a cult? Did she leave on her own accord? Did she not? At this point in time, the story is not just about Miranda. It's about all of the people in this group that do not have control over their lives. It's about Robert Shin's long history of using faith to control, defraud, uh, extort people to pay him money. And you have court records that prove that he has instructed and told people these things and refers to himself as a god. He has purchased a property in uh, a part of Los Angeles that has 15 acres with the goal of turning this into a commune. There are apartments and houses on this property. Robert has a school on this property and he wanted his vision, according to people I've talked to, is to create a sanctuary where people live there and he charges hand over fist to them. It's almost like he wants to create a world where every money, everything goes to him. And the big thing that I wanna note is that while Robert is living la a lavish lifestyle where he drives a Bentley and lives in a home that has like 6,000 square feet, he's putting dancers in homes in unsafe neighborhoods with not 6,000 square feet and the homes are anything but luxurious. He has put these, these dancers in a position where their entire lives are being dedicated to him under the false pretense that if they don't donate to him, they'll be cursed. And then you have women in the situation that are at risk because Lydia Chung in her same court filing did say that Robert Chung, she alleged, uh, wanted to her to give him a massage in an inappropriate place. And it was at that point that she realized that he had been using and manipulating her. He has a history of dating women in the church. And so it makes a lot of people very fearful for the safety of the female dancers in this group, knowing that Lydia says he tried to do this with me. He's married at least three women in this church. 
Uh, he's had short marriages here and there. It seems as though he has a fancy for women and control and money. So this is the update for today. Miranda has met with her parents. She doesn't look happy. And my, ex my belief is that this is because 7M is under pressure and losing money. But that doesn't change the fact of what's happened behind the scenes, the control, and all the other aspects of what they are doing to these dancers. Anytime there's a story, don't just focus on the one person. This is not a story about Miranda. This is a story about what Robert Shin is doing to a community of people. And we're going to keep up the investigation. All right, you guys, I'll be back later with more. Bye.